Hello everyone and welcome to this video and in case you've seen my previous videos well welcome back so today is a continuity of part one of my GAI series that I launched and in this video I'm gonna be going through prepping training data for deep learning previously we've seen how to prep the imagery get our imagery that ready to move to a deep learning workflow and this is really the essential spot of any deep learning workflow. We start with data prep, we then move to training data, train the model, and then test an inference and iterate. It's a process and hopefully I'm going to make this a little bit more approachable and open the ways for different alternatives as we go through these demonstrations. Please watch till the end and let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something missing, if something you'd like to see and I'll happily focus the coming content on these topics. With that, let's jump to my screen and get started. Let's start from where we left last week. We had a remap thruster for values above 1.5 meters highlighted as trees. This was created through a series of raster functions. If you want to learn more about this, please watch the previous video. To continue recapping, we really started from our DSM. I'm going to switch my ortho mosaic off. And this is the digital surface model. We then got to the DTM. From the DTM, I created an NDSM. And we can see the values of the NDSM are between 0 and 13.15. And then we established the remap of the NDSM where we got the trees highlighted. Now, if I put these over my ortho mosaic, it should look nice as we dissolved it. Now, from here onward, we want to tackle two things. We first want to create our training data for this workflow. And then we're going to touch a little bit on the RGB and DSM, which we created also in the last workflow. So we're going to be using both layers, RGB and DSM and Remap. And to start with, we're going to start with Remap. So I'm going to open my catalog. And if you see here, I have training areas. This is very essential. I'm going to click on this guy here, and maybe feature layer, and then import symbology. And I know I've got a symbology layer created for this. So if I look into my folders, I should be seeing it here, layer files, and then training areas. And what we're looking at here is extent where I'm going to be capturing tree training area. So I want to zoom in here and make sure that each one of these polygons is digitized through a feature class, which I've already pre-created. So this is the tree examples. And I'm going to add these here. And as you see, these are circles out there. Let's also serve it well and import the symbology. Since you might have noticed, there's also trees example. Just a tree is green, right? We can always come and give it a little bit of transparency. Let's do 25% and look in there. So we see the overlap. We see we're capturing the trees from the remap. And here the remap is really to help us capture these shapes and make sure we're capturing right training data. I don't want to capture this or this. I don't want to miss it for a tree. And I want to make sure I got only my tree training samples. If I look into the attribute table, I've got 327 features, which isn't a lot. They all got a class value, which is a tree. This is, if I go into my fields, is nothing but a fancy domain. Class should be short, an integer, numeric, and it got a class domain in here. To verify the class domain, I can easily go back to my catalog, navigate to the file geo database, and then I'm looking for domains. And in domains, you see class, and I have a code one and tree. If you want to add more classes to the workflow, you got to add two for shrubs, for instance, three ground covers, depending how you really classify your data and what you're looking for in there. So I'm going to close this guy. Now, the second thing I want to notice is I didn't only work with this. I worked with a couple of representative AOIs out there. I don't like this selection and I've got this. Perfect. Now I don't see the snipping. So I've captured most of the trees, I'd say. I'd say I'm at 90% something accuracy, a bit more of the training data and what it looks like. 
it's representative. It's got the dense areas around the river, scattered big trees, some open space trees, and a little bit of informal settlements trees. And these are one next to each house or multiple houses really there. So the next step from here is this data is ready and I want to export it. I want to export it for training data to train my model. And to do that, I'm going to be using a geoprocessing tool, which is export training data for deep learning. I'm going to get there and let's just open it up. And you can see it's up there. It's under the image analyst. I'm going to pin my geoprocessing just so we don't get this to step. I know I want to use an input raster of four bands in this use case. Remember, we created an RGB with NDSM. I can go and confirm this and I can look into my source and look into raster information and I've got four out there. I can easily go to my RGB to symbolize it. It's really symbolized by RGB here. We see the red, green, blue, but I can also, well, we were just on properties, but I want to go to edit functions which is edit function chain, and we can see all of that function chain to get to an RGB with NDSM. Again, for more details on this, the previous video got it all. So I'm gonna get this in. I don't have any additional input rasters. I need an output folder. I usually just specify that in my directory. So let's go one up. Oh, I needed to refresh exactly. Let's pick this guy and then in it, I want to create a separate training data set and I've called this trees classified tiles. Let's keep it simple. And for today, I'm going to be exporting two types of training data. And this is essential because I want to try two different models that particularly work with different training data. Now, this question is here. How do we know what metadata we want to choose? I write classified tiles here and I'll skip these and come back to them. If I go to metadata format, I can choose classified tiles here or notice Pascal visual object classes, which is the default in this use case. I'll switch to classified tiles and then I'll get a link to my screen, which I find myself always going back to deep learning model architectures. I'll drop the link for this in the description, by the way. You can here find all the details you need about metadata and models and whatnot. So you've got the deep learning model types and you've got the supported metadata. Essential for each model. If I want to learn more about the model, I'll click it, open it and read a bit more. Maybe we'll cover this in later videos. For now, I want to be using two models, DeepLab and FasterRCNN. You can see DeepLab here, it works with classified tiles. And I can see FasterRCNN somewhere here and it works with Pascal VOC. We're gonna, as I said, learn more about these as we move forward, but for today, our focus is training data and we'd like to get these metadata out. So I'm gonna close this screen and continue working on this. I've got my RGB, got my output, and then I need an input training data, which is my tree example. I've got the class field, which we've seen. I then have an input mass polygon, and this is pretty instrumental for my workflow. These are the orange boxes. I want to make sure I don't export any data here that is not labeled and I train the model on it and I might get odd results. I want to limit what the model gets. And within these AOIs, every tree is labeled. So I'm really enhancing my accuracy in this workflow. I'm going to leave the diff format, tile size 256, leave that stride 128, leave the map space. I'll go to my environments and I know my trees are at zero or my imagery is at zero point two centimeter or two centimeter 0 0.02 meter resolution and I'd like to get the scale a little bit up the resolution it's too much data 2.2 to 2.5 centimeter is very fine trees are good on 10 centimeter 5 to 10 centimeter and I'm gonna go with the 5 centimeter for this workflow in case you have lots of data and your trees are bigger in sizes I recommend to bump up the cell size even more but I'll start with 0.05. I don't need to specify an extent in this use case as I've got my AYs or training areas. So I'm ready, go down and run this. Now, as this is running, I'm gonna also initiate the second workflow, which 
Remember I said I want Pascal DOC, so I'm gonna go and change this Pascal DOC. And then all I wanna do is change this to a different metadata, which is Pascal Visual Object Classes. Keep the others all as is and run. I can always go back to my analysis and let's see, it's been a while since I've reached the history. There's plenty of things here, but I can track what's going on and I can look into the messages and this can take some time, right? Because it's going through different images, picking them up and classifying or creating the image and its label. And we're going to be seeing that in a moment. So I'll fast forward through this. So the tool is successful. It took some time, eight minutes, 45 seconds, but we're dealing with high resolution data and multiple bands. Now, as this one is running, the next one, the Pascal VOC, let's explore a little bit what we got here. And I highly recommend doing this really before going to any deep learning workflow or training a model particularly, which is our upcoming video. So I'm gonna go to my training data, which is down here. And as you see, I have multiple different workflows I've been secretly testing with these. And I wanna explore the images. And you can see under each one of these, so this is the trees classified task that I just extracted. There's multiple images in there in the images folder. And then there's multiple labels. And I highly recommend exploring both. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and just grab 20 till 39 add them to my imagery and you see they're added in here. To easily verify this, we can, a small trick, they're all selected, hold the control, click this, they'll minimize. And then I wanna switch off my ortho mosaic and zoom in. And I can see some of these data indeed there is some images in there. I can still see an ortho mosaic in here, which is, oh, that's the RGB, perfect. So these are my chips and I can see the tree in there. Let's go and explore the labels for now. So we got 20 till 39. I'm gonna go to my labels and pick the same guys in here. And drag and drop and do the same. Now you notice these are a little bit different. They're black and dark and they have values zero to one. I can switch off my trees areas and I can see the label. That's the tree, that's the tree, that's the tree. So this is my one value and this is my zero value. Since we've also exported an NDSM with our imagery, I wanna verify that that's there. So I'm gonna click on one of the images which are out there. Let's remove the labels, I remember. These are my labels, get rid of them. And then in the imagery, I'm gonna click on the raster layer go to symbology and stretch. Now the default is gonna be the RGB, uh, the stretch band one from the RGB. I'm interested in the fourth band. And you can see this is already changed. So I can go select all the others for now, delete them and look in here. You can see my values. This should be zero to 496. My highest is 496, which is, I guess the tree in this use case. So for now, we've seen how to work with classified tiles. I'm still gonna show the Pascal VOC once that tool is done, but as that is running, I'm gonna navigate back here, right click and show in File Explorer. And I highly recommend also doing this. There's the stat and the MD. Start with the uh, stat file. This one also works. The .text, I'll open that in a notepad. And you can see there's these features, which are the different images that have been exported, the minimum, mean, and max of the uh, NDSM, uh, the classes, which is one, and then number of images, the number of features in the images, and that's the total. Remember, there's an overlap between the images and whatnot. So the model is gonna get a decent amount of data. The mean size is 12 meters, and the max size is 163 meters. And that's really the sizes of the trees in a way. So I'll close this. I also highly recommend opening the MD file and look into the classes and how it's documented, the different bands that are out there and some information about these bands. 
very highly recommended workflow just to know what's going into the next step what is the training gonna do and if you got some training data it's easy to tell here it's classified tiles for instance as the metadata mode is there i'm gonna close this guy and then let's navigate to the voc which is pascal voc and the same will happen first images and labels need to be done now images in this use case should be the same for band images dot div values labels are going to be quite different and since we're here the tool is still running but you can see these are dot xml files so i'm gonna open this guy and let's see open with let's do a notepad plus plus and i'm gonna look into this and i see that i have reference to the tiff it's using annotations with ArcGIS pro the size the depth is four bands and then the one which is the class value there's two in this chip for instance and they sit in this coordinate of the image so with pascal voc it's an extent the model is eventually going to get an object detection rather than a pixel classification and we're going to explore these again more as we get to the workflow itself of training a model but it's good to know how the training data and the metadata format affect these models and what end results can we that let's navigate back to ArcGIS Pro. Close this guy. I'd like it's a bit too late, but let's rename this to training prep. We have our three examples in here. We've got our raster functions and we need our NDSM ready for the upcoming workflow. I'll minimize this, minimize these guys, look into my history, and this is still running. I think it's gonna take two more loops so i'm gonna also again fast forward through this and i'll see you at the end and this one is successful great let's close these let's look into our catalog and again navigate to training data verify these guys images we see all of that in they should be really the same images. I can easily drag and drop another one and just zoom to layer and you see the image with the tree in to verify, switch this off and that's our chip. As I told you, a bigger chip might be useful, but for now, this is fine. I know that on this workflow, five centimeter is good enough for this model. Maybe stretching to 10 will miss out on smaller trees and I'd like to avoid that. So I'm gonna switch this off and with that we're really ready for our next workflow of training a model and that will be in the upcoming video thanks for watching this far so to recap what we've seen we today explored the imagery we created in the previous video we then looked at training area and training data for trees we looked at the class assigned and its domain we then used export training data and exported two different metadata formats, Pascal VOC and classified tiles. As I mentioned, the next video will be about training the model. That was it for today and thanks for watching. Bye for now.